Hi everyone and uh, welcome to our Facebook Live today where we're going to be talking about nutrition, we're going to be talking about uh, keto, we're going to be talking about um, all the different aspects of nutrition and how they play a role in, in managing both lipedema and lymphedema. Um, I, I hope that you can hear me and that you can see me and that everything is well. We're going to get started um, talking today. I'm assuming people will sort of drop in as we go through the presentation. Um, but we, we've had a few little technical issues. Some of the slides have gone a bit wonky as we've uploaded them this morning. So my, my picture is showing a little bit with some others, but I guess you can see me okay. For those of you that don't know who I am, I am uh, Carrie Reedy. I hail from... Um, Perth in Western Australia. That's why I have a bit of an <laughs> unusual accent. I'm a uh, university qualified nutritionist. I live a low carb ketogenic lifestyle myself. Um, I have a very much a holistic perspective when I think about people's health and well-being. And certainly I've been involved with the lipidema community for some time now. I think it's probably coming up to two years. Uh, I have a lot of experience helping support ladies with lipedema in terms of addressing dietary and lifestyle um, practices, but also in helping people look holistically or globally at what's going on with all of their health. Hi, I can see that Kathy from New Jersey is here. It's lovely to have you with us. If anyone else wants to pop in and say hi in the chat, that would be great. It's nice to know that there's someone uh, on the other side of this. Um, what I'd also love you to do is put any questions that you may have as we work through the presentation uh, in the comments so that we can slowly work through them at the end. I certainly want to leave time for questions and answers because this is a really big topic. It really is. And for many of us that are coming to uh, lipedema, either we're new to the diagnosis or we're new to thinking about the role that maybe food and nutrition may play in this, it certainly can feel overwhelming, you know, and we have so many questions going on around this. Hi, Zelda. Hi, whoever it is from Two Rivers. It's lovely to have um, you both with us as well. Oh, someone else from Michigan. You know, when I see people's names come up from places in America, I'm like, oh, I've heard of that place, but I don't think I'd be able to put any of them on a map. So <laughs> I guess the reverse is probably true. I don't imagine many of you could find Perth on a map either. I feel like I live in one of the most isolated cities in the whole world. Um, Val just just popped in from a Kai in Queensland. So I guess you know where Perth is. <laughs> so yes, like I was saying, lots and lots of questions around um both lipedema and lymphedema and what we can do to support these nutritionally. And, and it's not just nutrition. I want to say right from the outset, this condition is very multifaceted and often it takes lots of different pieces in a puzzle that we can put together to try and work out the best treatment program or management program for us personally. Uh, when I think about this, I was just recently um, with somebody that was doing a 3000 piece puzzle and it was like there were it just felt like there was a million pieces of this puzzle laid out across the table. And I sort of had to laugh when I saw this slide again this morning because I'm like, yep, sometimes trying to navigate the world of lipedema and lymphedema does feel like trying to manage something like a 3000 puzzle. You get a few pieces in place and then you're like, OK, we're next. A few more pieces in place, then we're next. You know, when our family does puzzles and we we quite like doing puzzles, we really have to think about getting all of those corner pieces in place. I don't know whether you all have the same strategy that I have, but we think if we get the corner pieces in, then we can start to build the edges and we sort of work inwards from there. So I guess the question then becomes, what are these corner pieces for the lipedema puzzle? And certainly um, we know that uh, physical therapies are really important. So, you know, manual lymphatic drainage, wearing compression garments, these things are really, really important. They help us manage the condition on a day-to-day -day basis. Also, from my perspective, there is uh, a piece to this puzzle that has to do with the mind-body connection. That's, you know, all of the stress that we experience in our lives. How does that play into things like too much cortisol floating around in the system, which impacts things like insulin and, and blood sugar regulation. You know, I, I often say to people, we can eat the best diet in the world, but if we're stressed, it really negates a lot of that. And so that's not to say just go with glee abandon and eat whatever you like. <laughs> what I mean by that is 
you know, we also need to address this mind body, this stress reduction piece. It's really, really fundamental. We also need to think about all of the lifestyle uh, approaches that are important here, making sure we're staying well hydrated, moving our bodies when we can within the capacity that we have. Uh, Kathy's just said that she can't really lose much weight because and her mobility is being affected. And yes, this is absolutely true. You know, someone could easily sit on the other side of the computer screen and say, you know, move your body. Um, but we know with this condition, it's not always as simple as that. And, you know, we need to be following, you know, the recommendations that are given for us based on our particular circumstances. But in terms of other lifestyle factors, our sleep is critical, getting enough sleep. And again, one of the things I often hear from my ladies is, it's painful, you know, sleeping's not easy. Some people feel like they need to sleep more upright, which doesn't give them a great quality sleep either. And so, you know, we need to be thinking about all of these pieces. And of course, the fourth piece of this fourth corner piece of this puzzle would be the dietary practices. And they're what we're going to be talking a little bit more about today, because they're in my, I guess, realm of, of understanding as a nutritionist. So um, wonderful to see a few more of you here. Um, somebody from Wales in the UK and someone from Ontario and Canada. It's really uh, lovely to feel like we're part of a worldwide community. Uh, Lipedema doesn't just um, define itself based on geographical locations. Many of us um, struggle with this and it's nice to have you with us. I can see some questions already coming up in the chat box and we'll come up to those um, as we move to the end of the presentation. I hope you don't mind if I just leave them to the end. That makes it a little bit easier to go through the presentation and then sort of share with you um, some responses to those. So what are the everyday dietary lifestyle, dietary practices in particular? Well, in terms of what we know and understand about lipedema, over time, there's been a bit of an evolution in terms of what's helpful, what's not in terms of, of nutrition. It started probably, you know, going back 10 years or so, where the RAD diet was what was recommended for um, lipedema. What you'll see in this little diagram here, a bit of a complicated Venn diagram, but what we see is the RAD diet. We also see the Mediterranean diet. There has been some research published recently putting keto and the Mediterranean diet head to head, and I'll mention that again in a minute. Um, but the Mediterranean diet being like a whole food um way of eating. We also have an anti-inflammatory type diet, type way of eating uh, that can be helpful. Certainly, we know that there's an inflammatory component to the growth and, and um, per perpetuation of lipedema. So we need to be mindful of, of the inflammatory load that we have. Uh, and then we also have keto. And what you'll see is when we look at all of these, if you were to try and do all of these, First of all, you'd kind of, you know, it would just be crazy. It would be really hard to do. But there's very little space in the middle where all of these intersect. And I'm really all about trying to find a diet of inclusion where we're including as many different things as we possibly can rather than focusing on a diet of exclusion. And if you were trying to take aspects of all of these different ways of eating and put them together, um, it would be really complicated. So just recently, keto and um, Mediterranean diet were put head to head in some research that came out of Europe. What they found is both the ketogenic diet and the lipid and the Mediterranean diet did show some positive body composition changes. But what they found is that keto had some additional benefits to the Mediterranean diet in terms of um, lowering uh, levels of pain and inflammation. So I think what we need to consider here is we're going to get benefit from any dietary changes we make. If we're moving from what we would call that standard American diet, that standard Western diet, uh, and we're moving towards more, I guess, healthy, holistic eating principles, we're naturally going to be lowering the level of inflammatory foods in our food supply. We're going to be uh, dramatically minimizing the amount of processed foods. We're going to be avoiding sugar. So naturally, we will all get benefit from any time we move from what we would call that Western diet to a more whole food, um, sort of real food way of eating. What we do know, though, is that 
keto as one of the ways that we can eat it i think about it in terms of if you're a computer geek a bit like me it's more the operating system the operating system of focusing on on eating real food and we do that through the lens of, of a ketogenic way of eating what the research and certainly anecdotal uh, experience for many many in our community is that ketogenic eating provides greater energy naturally when our body's burning glucose it's which is what we mostly would be doing if we were eating a western diet is that's kind of a, like a dirty fuel uh, keto is like a ketones that we produce when we're eating a ketogenic diet in our body is like our body's burning a clean fuel so we naturally have more energy without some of the downside of of burning the glucose typically people have less cravings so most of us when we've been eating a western diet it feels like we go from one meal to the next snack to the next meal to the next snack we stay quite hungry and cravings can be really strong biochemically when we move to a ketogenic diet those cravings seem to just kind of come down a notch down a notch down a notch for some people that happens very quickly for other people it can take a little bit of time but it certainly makes sticking to a new eating regime easier when we don't have that little sort of voice on our shoulder saying, you know, eat me, eat me, eat me to all of these things that are going on around us in terms of food choices. What I like about a ketogenic diet is we're able to kind of ditch that diet mindset and start to eat, you know, real food and enjoy that food again. I, I'd love if you put in the chat to me, how many of you feel like you've spent half or more of your life being on a diet? That's one of the things I hear over and over and over when I work with ladies with lipedema is you know right from a young age they feel like they've always been either on a diet or about to go on a diet because the body composition impact of lipedema kind of sets us up for that that you know it could be a well-meaning um, health professional that says you know we need to lose some weight so the only way that we know how to do that is to eat less calories to try and move our bodies more and so, you know, perpetually, many of us feel like we've been on a diet. When we move to a ketogenic way of eating, and I do refer to it as a way of eating rather than a diet, it's a nice way to be able to focus on the food itself without thinking about how many calories in this, what's this going to do to my body? We really want to be able to kind of leave that behind and and really come back to enjoying the food that we're eating yeah joy's just put in the um the chat that she's um over a decade in terms of dieting and that's not uncommon um you know certainly uh when the questions on one one of my intake forms is you know what dietary interventions have you tried in the past one of the common things that i i find with with my lipedema ladies is they say there's not enough space in that box <laughs> to write all the different diets they've tried. So yeah, um, Zelda's saying too, she feels like she's been from one diet to the, to the next, to the next all their life. And, and this is really common. And so, you know, when I think about encouraging people to try out and test out a ketogenic diet, I really like them to think of this in terms of not just being one more diet. It's really about just trying a totally different way um, an operating system of eating and seeing what benefits come. Some of those benefits include uh, certainly body composition changed, but even before numbers change on the scale, people say to me, everything just feels more comfortable. My clothes fit more comfortably. They don't feel so tight. I have less inflammation, less pain and swelling. And these things add to a greater sense of, of well-being in and of ourselves, and more hope for the future. Because one of the things that we know if, if you go on that, you know, typical diet and, you know, the paperwork that comes along with that diet says, you know, you should expect to lose, you know, two to four pounds every week ongoingly and you don't. <laughs> you know, it works for other people, but it doesn't work for you. Really, really challenging and really um, difficult to keep that sense of hope when you're not getting the results that you want. So why does uh, keto provide these benefits and why do we recommend it because when we lower the carbohydrate intake on our diet we do get less inflammation our hormones tend to regulate and balance we get regulation of insulin which helps us to overall balance out our blood sugar it seems that by lowering carbohydrates and naturally when we lower the carbohydrates we increase other things and one of those is healthy dietary fats that tends to help with things like um, great better lymph flow and we know that we need better lymph flow 
to be helping managing both uh, lipedema and lymphedema. So where do we start? Uh, this is always the question. It's anytime we try to do something new, it can be tricky. Um, what I'm going to be sharing with you today is some information about our next small group coaching. And when I get to the end of the presentation, I'll tell you a little bit more about what that small group uh, coaching is all about. Uh, but what I want you to be thinking about now is where you are now and where you want to get to. Um, let's just see what we have next. Okay, so we are all starting at different places and sometimes this can make even getting started tricky. You know, we could be eating that standard American diet. We could already have moved to eating more of a whole food diet. This would be a bit more of a, like a paleo or a whole 30 kind of way of eating. For some of us, we've already uh, heard a lot in this community about carbohydrates and keto and we're already starting to naturally uh, lower the intake of carbohydrate. Um, Joy just asked, is gluten part of the carb issue? So gluten, obviously coming from, from grains, is a carb. Naturally, when we move to eating in a, in a ketogenic way, we're not eating those grains. So typically we're avoiding gluten. But the gluten issue is it, it can be a problem for many of us for different reasons because it has to do with the way that the gut lining works and inflammation in the gut lining. We can talk a little bit more about that uh, later, Joy, and maybe you can give some more clarity to your question if you want to add a little bit more information in there. Some of us, of course, are already dabbling with keto or we're already uh, here doing keto and just looking for some confirmation that we're on the right track. Uh, certainly lots of different uh, places that we can be in our journey. What often happens though when I start talking to people and saying, you know what, it's really worth testing out a ketogenic or a low carb way of eating, people kind of come up with this slide. And this is just a funny slide I saw online years ago, but I've just kept it because I just think it, it kind of explains a little bit about some of those misconceptions because sometimes we can go to our doctor and say, I've been recommended to try a ketogenic diet to see if it helps with my lipedema. And the doctor thinks that means all we're going to be doing is eating a pat of butter. Our friends think all we're eating is meat. Our vegetarian friends, you know, almost freak out when they think about this. Um, what I say is really this picture down the bottom, we want to do um, keto in the in the healthiest possible way. There certainly are some people in our in a lipidemic community that um, have are moving and testing out a carnivore way of eating, which really probably does fit into a couple of these slides here. But that to me is a bit of an advanced practice. Uh, that's something that we can test out down the track just to see how our body responds as we think about the steps we need to take from eating a Western kind of diet to moving in this direction. You know, keto seems like the logical starting point. And so that's why we're talking uh, about keto today. Keto isn't a one and done. Often there needs to be some tweaking that goes about it. And so, you know, carnivore might be one of those tweaks that we may choose to do and test out, out for ourselves a little bit down the track. Intermittent fasting is another connection, um, an advanced practice that we might want to consider down the track. Uh, I love this slide too, what people think keto is and what keto actually is. Now, this isn't to say we can't have bacon and eggs with a little bit of cheese on them for breakfast. You know, we do want to be making sure we're eating um, some of these higher fat foods to help us with satiety and to help keto work really well. But that doesn't mean to say that we can't enjoy all these other things, the, you know, the avocados and the green leafy vegetables, lots of eggs, all of these sorts of things. So that being said, hopefully that gives you a little bit of clarity that what we're talking about is a really healthy version of keto. There are so many keto experts online these days and they all say to do it in a slightly different way some of them focus on really high fat i feel like there's been a bit of a shift certainly in the lipedema community that we don't need to be striving for that you know really really high fat level anymore uh, what we want the body to be doing is using our own uh, reserves if you like that doesn't mean though that we avoid fat we all need some healthy fat in our diet each and every day our hormones are made from fat. Many of the other um, biochemical processes in the body need some dietary fat, but we want to focus that dietary fat on being uh, healthy options rather than some of the um, 
fats that we may have had in the past, you know, deep frying things in vegetable oil, you know, isn't what we're talking about. We're talking about getting our healthy fats from things like avocados, you know, oily fish, things like salmon, um, enjoying having that fat on the meat because it adds so much flavor, all of these sorts of things. So at this point, you know, what I would suggest to people is the only way to know if keto is going to work and if it's the right approach for you is to give it a go. There's no way that I, sitting on the other side of um, a desk from someone, can say uh, with certainty whether keto is going to help that person or not. I always approach this as being, let's test this out. This is an experiment. You've done so many other experiments, you know, different types of diets over your life. Um, you've pr approached all of those from an aspect of let's give this a go. Let's just look at keto as one more opportunity to give another way of eating a go and see how our particular body responds. So getting started is tricky. Staying on the ketogenic path can be a little bit tricky too. And I think that's because it's a convoluted path. And it really does help to have a guide by your side as you try to do this. Helps you navigate the path. Every single one of us is biochemically unique. So like I said, there is no one and done. Often we need to tweak the way that we are doing keto to make it fit in with whatever else is going on with us uh, personally and to make it fit with our life and our lifestyle. There are some challenges that come along with, with testing out a ketogenic diet. And I just want to kind of touch on a few of these so you can see how having someone by your side helping you navigate this in the early stages can be particularly benefit beneficial. Now, most of us come to wanting to test out something like a ketogenic way of eating because we want body composition change. We want weight loss. It's really important to understand that weight loss is not necessarily linear. And so typically what we find when we start a ketogenic way of eating is we do get a water weight loss in the first week or two. Uh, we can then plateau out for a little while while our body's doing some underlying healing work in the background. And people often say to me, oh, it worked for a couple of weeks and then it stopped working. What I would say to you is it's not that it stopped working. It's that the body's doing this underlying healing work, getting some other pieces to this puzzle in place before it starts releasing weight again. It's really important to be patient and to kind of trust the process if you like. You may even find that after a couple of weeks, you may even get a slight rise before things start, you know, dipping down. And as much as we would like this trajectory to constantly be heading in a downward um, pattern, it doesn't seem to do that with keto, that we do get these, you know, periods of time when we might get a plateau and then the body moves into another um, weight loss phase. It really is important, like I said, to be uh, patient and to trust the process. I, I say to people, you know, it, the, the ideal way to do this is to, to think about testing it out for like six weeks and really just assessing and seeing how you feel at six weeks. If you're seeing a lot of really positive benefits in terms of pain reduction, clothes feeling more comfortable, feeling more energetic, potentially sleeping better, then that those sorts of things are worth continuing that trial. If you were to feel absolutely wretched, that would be a discussion to have and try and work out what else may be going on. I can see that somebody put in the in the questions here about mast cell activation. And there are other uh, facets that might be going on in our lives. We are all biochemically unique. We call this bio-individuality. Mast cell activation syndrome uh, is a issue that's come up in our body where our bodies are like hypersensitive and are overreacting to all sorts of things. And this can play out with all sorts of different symptoms. It's fairly tricky to um, navigate, certainly with mast cell activation, you don't want to avoid the fermented foods, but there are some other foods that are quite commonly included in a ketogenic diet that may be a little bit of a trigger for mast cell activation. So certainly we can come back around to talking about that a little bit more at the end, but it certainly leads into this discussion that we are all very unique. We have different genetics, uh, we have different environmental impacts, whether that's just um, stress in our household or we live in a mouldy environment or whatever it may be. That environment uh, impacts the current state of our health. So whether we have um, comorbid morbid conditions along the lines of histamine intolerance, mast cell activation, uh, thyroid issues certainly play a role. There is some chat about 
whether keto is right for those with a hypothyroid condition. But in my experience, probably half of my clients uh, that I work with uh, in a ketogenic diet also have an underlying uh, thyroid issue. We just have to navigate that and make sure people are eating enough so that it's not triggering that thyroid to downregulate more. But there's certainly a lot of ways that we can play around and, and keep supporting that. But there are other health conditions that come along as well that we need to consider. And certainly that stress load, I mentioned that right at the beginning, but the more stressed we are, the more challenging it is. And learning some stress management techniques can be really helpful um, to navigate all of this as well and to help settle down some of those impacts that may be coming along from um, our stress load. Keto, as I've said, is often promoted as this one size fits all. But I think uh, especially ladies here in our lipedema community <laughs> know that there is no such thing as one size fits all you know they 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 say that but it isn't the case and keto is the same we really do There's need to be able to, to adapt it um to whatever's going on uh with us and our other um comorbidities and our biochemistry to make sure that we get the to do keto in a way that works and supports us. The third challenge I often see, and we've already alluded to this, that many of us have spent countless years, probably more than we would like to, to work out, dieting. And the more that we have dieted in the past, the more our body will fight our weight loss efforts. And this is so incredibly frustrating to many in our community. I know it's been to, to me personally, um, when I've seen other people, you know, it's not uncommon in this community to have a history with disordered eating um, based on those concerns about body composition. And the more that we've restricted our eating in the past, the more our body is going to be doing everything it can, can to defend us holding on to any excess weight that we may have. It also means that it's, we have a bit of a higher set point in terms of where our body says, oh, if you're eating under this level, I think you're starving, I need to change the biochemistry. We need to be really mindful uh, about this too and make sure that if you are somebody that um, has had long periods of restricted eating in the past, that you don't go too low in your food intake. Uh, one of the beautiful benefits of eating keto is because we're not eating those carbohydrates, we can tend to eat a little bit more protein, um, more of those non-starchy vegetables within certain limits um, and, and feel full and feel satisfied with our meals, but still be telling our body that, yes, you're eating enough and it doesn't need to go into that starvation mode and defend yourself from any sorts of weight loss. Um, the fourth challenge I just want to mention is to, to do with uh, getting into ketosis. So when we remove carbohydrates and those really high uh, carbohydrate foods from our diet and we dramatically decrease our carbohydrate intake, we very quickly, you know, within three or four days can move into what we call a state of ketosis. And this is really important. This is where our body starts to get the uh, machinery adjusted, if you like, to living in this new way of eating, this new operating system. Getting into ketosis is one thing. It does take time to what we we call being fat adapted. Being fat adapted means that our body preferentially uh, burns fat for fuel rather than burning sugar for fuel. And this can take longer. But we do start to get the benefits of being in ketosis within a reasonably short period of time, sort of four days to a week. Sometimes that can be a little bit rough. We call that the keto flu. There are certainly strategies that we have to help support people as they navigate uh, through that. But we do want to be mindful that um, it can take time to get to this place where our body's machinery is preferentially um, working in a ketogenic state. All of these factors require patience. And I don't know about you, <laughs> but patience is probably not one of my strong points. I know that when I try something new, I want to start getting results really quickly. And so, you know, what I would just sort of implore you is to try and be patient and to trust the process when it comes to testing out whether keto helps you and helps your lipedema and lymphedema symptoms. So how do we know when we need to start tweaking things? I mentioned before that, you know, there is no one size fits all. Um, how do we know when we need to do these things? How do we know whether we've stalled in our weight loss or whether it's a plateau, whether we're having struggles because of some of our food choices? And again, this is where having a guide by your side can really be helpful. When we're trying to navigate 
things like this on our own, it can be really tricky. We start to, I guess, get a little bit in our head and start to think, oh, this isn't working. What else is there? And we start sort of going down multiple rabbit holes. You know, what we want to be thinking about is what else is going on with us? There's certainly uh, in a ketogenic diet, we include typically a lot of dairy, a lot of eggs. Both of those foods can be foods that uh, can create inflammation for some people. So I guess the question I would ask is, could there be underlying food intolerance that are continuing to hamper our efforts? And this is a graph from one of our other nutritionists. She, um, at the beginning or late, late last year, beginning of this year, um, sort of did a bit of a regroup, wanted to lose a couple of kilos. And this is her graph. You'll see these spikes here. Each of these spikes is when she had dairy. And like I said, dairy is often commonly included in a ketogenic diet. And for many people, it's just fine. But for her personally, every time that she had dairy, it contributed to a whole lot of inflammation in the body. And when our body is inflamed, I tend to liken this to fire. And naturally, what are we going to do if there's fire? We're going to put water on it. And so each of these little spikes here is the body holding onto a lot of excess water. And what you'll notice is when she stopped having that dairy, very quickly it came back down. And so it's important to understand that we need to be assessing as we go along, uh, considering is there still something in my ketogenic way of eating that's contributing to some inflammation in the body. You know, coinciding with these blips in weight was a lot more discomfort in her body. And so it really helped her understand that connection between what she was eating and the experiences she was having with her lipedema pain and just generally overall and how she was feeling. Sometimes as we move beyond those initial few weeks when we're really focused on what we're doing in terms of keto, we can slowly over time uh, end up with what we call carb creep or fat creep where we think we're sticking to kind of the general guidelines, but, you know, we're throwing in a snack here or we're just having a little bit off our kid's plate here. And, you know, naturally keto uh, happens when we have carbohydrates at a certain level, but if we increase those carbohydrates even just a little bit, we may no longer be in ketosis. So, you know, it's important to think about whether that's become a problem in terms of that fat intake, are we having more fat than maybe we particularly need? I use fat as a as a, as a way of keeping me full and satiated from meal to meal. Um, if we maybe are eating more fat than we need, that's certainly another one of those macros that we can play around with and see whether a little bit less helps us to get um, more in terms of those goals that we're trying to focus on. Uh, I mentioned before that there can be some underlying health issues, but certainly a sluggish thyroid, uh, underlying metabolic dysregulation. Seems that there's quite a, a lot of that at play in our lipedema community and also uh, hypothyroidism are really common. I would um, actually probably put it about half of my clients also have either overt hypothyroidism or some sort of subclinical um, low thyroid function. So this is certainly something that we want to be thinking about. And there's also an interesting phenomenon known as cellular hyperthyroidism. And that's where all of our markers on a pathology test look great. We have good levels of thyroid hormones, but for some reason, it's like we're sending out the messengers, but the cells aren't receiving it. And if the cells aren't receiving those thyroid hormones and acting on them, then we can still have a lot of hyperthyroid symptoms, even when our pathology is looking normal. So that's also something that we need to consider and something that we talk about in terms of helping people navigate uh, a lower carb ketogenic way of eating. Really interestingly, for many of us that have had that lifetime of, of dieting, it could be that we're not eating enough. Uh, our bodies need to feel safe that we are eating sufficiently to have certain metabolic processes happen appropriately. And so it really can be an issue that if we've got to the point where we're eating, you know, 500, 600, 700 calories a day um, on a typical Western diet, that that may have allowed our, or encouraged our body to just downregulate a whole lot of metabolic processes. So we need to be mindful of that. When we eat keto, naturally, those calories do seem to be lower, but we're actually eating more. So there's certainly a conversation to be had around that. But just thinking about, could we be eating too little? 
Um, could we be eating less frequently? Could this help? There's lots of different ways that we can navigate and manage keto to make it work for us. Like I said before, intermittent fasting can be a bit of an advanced practice in terms of trying to navigate how we feel best. But naturally, when we move to a ketogenic way of eating and we have less hunger, it becomes just a natural extension that we don't wake up ravenously hungry at six o'clock in the morning, but naturally we eat breakfast a little later in the day. And when we have longer periods of time without food, our body goes into what we call a state of autophagy. And autophagy is really a cellular housekeeping process. And we really do want to be encouraging this cellular housekeeping process to happen. It goes in and um, repairs damaged um, parts of our cell structure, which allows those cells to work more optimally. And we do want every aspect of our health to be working as optimally as possible as we try to manage this condition. So stress, as I mentioned before, certainly can be impacting weight loss goals too. And so all of these different things that I'm talking about here are just different things that we can think about when, if particularly we're not getting all of the results that we want from keto, we need to start thinking about could some of these other aspects uh, be playing a role in our weight loss efforts. So whether you're new to keto, whether you're well along your journey, Hopefully the information that we've shared today has given you an opportunity to sort of push the pause button and to, to regroup and think, where am I at? Is keto the next right step for me? Is keto still working for me? Could I have slipped out of ketosis? What's the very next step for me? And often it's an opportunity as we reflect on these things, we can start to see, oh, I've got this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece of the puzzle in place oh, that's a piece I haven't addressed already. Maybe that's my next move. So what I tend to, to find really beneficial when someone's trying to either start a ketogenic diet or they've been doing a ketogenic for some time is really seeing it as, a, as an experiment, a test, something that we're doing just to see how our body responds and assess, assess, assess all the way along the way. If things feel like they're not working, then it's time to tweak them. You know, if, 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 you keep doing the same thing and it's not working and you just get more and more frustrated, it's not going to serve its purpose. We do need to assess along the way and see where we might need to make some minor course adjustments with the way that we're doing keto and see what benefits we get from that. I always suggest to people approaching a ketogenic intervention with curiosity rather than seeing it as, oh, here's, here's my one last ditch effort to make a difference in my lipedema. I would say, no, Try and look at it from the mindset, I'm really curious how this other approach will help. What benefits will I get? How does it feel like it's helping serve me? And when we approach it from that aspect, it can be really helpful because we don't have that black or white thinking that's either it's, it's working or it's not working. It's more that we're able to see what benefits are coming along. What, what am I gaining from this? What areas am I not feeling are serving me and where can I mix this up and change it to see how we feel? I also really encourage people to find their own personal barometer to see how it's working. Now, this was um, the experience that my um, colleague had where she was really going back to being really consistent in a, in a ketogenic approach and she noticed that her barometer was the scales jumped when she ate things that weren't uh, serving her well and she had an increase in pain. Now I have one client that says to me, I just get a really aching, aching elbow when I move out of ketosis. And that's such an interesting barometer because most of us would have different parts of our body that would be in pain. It might be the areas with lipedema, but it seemed to her that when she was in a ketogenic state, her arthritis was just, you know, it, it didn't affect her at all. But as soon as she moved out of keto, uh, and a ketogenic state, that arthritis tended to flare up in her elbow. And so that was her personal barometer. And she was able to gauge, you know, how she was tracking with, with that. For each of us, that will be unique. For many with lipedema, it is the pain that we experience in our limbs. It is the uh, lack of energy, these sorts of things. But it really can be helpful moving forward to have and to recognize where our barometer is because then it's very easy to see as we start playing around a little bit with quantities in our ketogenic diet, what's serving us and what's not. You know, you may find that just having that extra couple of cups of vegetables a day 
puts you out of ketosis and you start to get some of these symptoms. Now, vegetables, as we know, can be very healthy, but it may just be that they're not serving us at that particular time and it's just too much for us. But we may be able to cut that back a little bit and find that we move back into ketosis and those aches and pains don't uh, have so much of an issue for us. So as we think about all of these aspects of keto, how do we step into a ketogenic way of eating, testing out whether this is right for us? I want to tell you a little bit more about our small group coaching options. So I am one of the coaches with Lipedema Simplified. People can book uh, one-on-one coaching sessions with me uh, where we can talk through what's going on with your health. We can talk about uh, whether keto is the right approach for you, whether we can Um, you know, work on some of those other underlying health conditions, for instance, a thyroid concern or or blood sugar dysregulation. That's what one-on-one coaching is about. We can um, have a very intimate kind of conversation about you and your health, and we can work on um, trying to rectify some of those health concerns that you have. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the one-on-one coaching program, you can go to the lipedemasimplified.org website, click on the coaching tab, and it will give you a little bit more information. You can also um, there register for what we call a discovery call, which is a complimentary 15-minute chat on the phone. Uh, Actually, it's not on the phone because I live on the other side of the world. It's on Zoom. (laughs) Sorry about that. Um, But we can chat on Zoom and we can talk about what's going on for you. I can explain what some of the options are and we can go from there. But if you're feeling like right now, I really need to give this keto a go. Either you've tried it in the past and, and have felt like it's all too hard throwing your hands in the air or whether you feel like you know, you you need some tweaks in what you're already doing. Small group coaching is a wonderful way of doing this because you're getting these personalized recommendations, but you're doing it in a group, which makes it more cost effective. Uh, We have more consistent or timely calls, uh, just to give a little bit more detail about that in a moment. But we have six sessions over three weeks where we really lay out what a ketogenic diet would look like how we're going to go about this. We share recipes. We talk about some of the um, challenges, things like the ketogenic flu, uh, whatever else we might uh, be having challenges with. But let me just go back to this slide before and just share with you a little bit. I mentioned this before that there are many, many different ways that people can do keto. What we really focus on here at Lipedema Simplified is doing this in the healthiest possible way. And Many of us, and 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 I and I put myself in this group, get very excited when I jump onto a a ketogenic recipe site, and all of a sudden I find myself lost in the weeds of the desserts. I don't know whether anyone else has that experience, um, but it you know we can do keto in either a very healthy way or in a not so beneficial way, and we really focus uh, our approach on doing it in a healthy way. We feel that we need to make it something that's sustainable. If when you test this out and you go, you know, four, six weeks and you you come back to me and you you say, you know what, I'm feeling more more energetic, Um, my my lipedema tissue doesn't hurt so much, the swelling feels like it's coming down, we need then to make this something that's sustainable for the long term. This wouldn't be then a short-term intervention to lose a few kilos and then go back to what we've been doing before. And so the way that we approach this is to give you a framework so that you can make something that this is sustainable, that you can live in a a way that you feel um, is congruent with uh, your way of life, but you can fit that in with um, making keto work for you. And certainly the last um, aspect of this is we need to personalize this. I think we've already talked a little bit about how we're also biochemically unique. There's lots of different underlying factors that can be going on. Just jumping online and finding any old internet keto plan may not serve you uh, if you have some of these other underlying health concerns. So we need to be addressing these as well. Our small group coaching is kicking off this uh, weekend, actually Sunday night uh, in the US. So that will be Monday morning for me um, here in Australia. But what it includes is a group of people, up to six people. Uh, There's three one-hour live group coaching sessions. That's where we really lay out how we're going to go about it, the nuts and bolts of what's this going to look like on a day-to-day basis? How are you going to navigate this when you go have dinner at a friend's house, when you eat out, when you're in such a mad rush of a day that you need to get some takeout? How are you going to navigate keto and make it work for you? 
We also have three one-hour Q&A sessions where we talk about what's come up during the week and really navigate those questions that people may have. And what's really interesting about small group coaching, we've been doing it um, all year, is that so many of us don't realize we have a question until somebody else has asked it. And then we're like, oh, I'm so glad someone asked that because I really needed to know the answer. And so again, there's some really wonderful synergy and power that comes from this group approach. We also have a private Facebook group so people can post questions or can uh, share their wins, share recipes that they've found, all sorts of things. And then you also have access to the replays of these um, for up to six months. And reason being is that Sometimes we need to hear the same information a couple of different times. Um, often what I find is that we pick certain bits uh, the first time we hear it, the next time we hear it, we think to ourselves, I don't remember her saying that last time because we've already been thinking about some of the other things that are going on. And so that's where it becomes really helpful to be able to listen uh, again down the track just to make sure that we are in fact sticking on the track of what we're trying to do. Um, we also um, have, in addition, like I said, to the six hours of support, the private Facebook group, there's also handouts, recipes, checklists, assessments. And when I say assessments, that's because we need to be assessing this all the way along. Our brains uh, work in this very interesting way that we forget how things have been. And so I like people to do an assessment before they start keto, just to really kind of assess where their symptoms are at and then to assess again in either four or six weeks down the track just to see how they are tracking. And that's a very easy way to quantify what benefits we've got. If you said to me before, you know, my sleep's like a one out of 10, and then in six weeks you said, oh, actually, it's not 100%, but it's maybe it's a five out of 10, we have to recognize that as progress rather than thinking we need to go from here to here. This is a journey. We don't unwind years of of dysfunction in a couple of weeks. It does take time, um, but what we want to be doing is making sure that we're on the right trajectory and that we're heading uh, in the direction that we want. Now, in terms of um, the cost, um, $197 for six hours of coaching for the private Facebook group and for all of the other resources that you get is really a, a nice cost-effective way of being able to test out keto, to do it along the at the same time as other people, it gives a nice uh, level of accountability too when you check back in and, and you can sort of feel like you're, you're able to sort of report back what you're experiencing. Now, some people use the three weeks of coaching to really just get their heads around this um, and to work out what their next steps are. Other people say to me, tell me what to do and I'm going to start it today. And it's certainly up to you, whichever way feels more comfortable. You know, we all have different learning styles. So we do want to think about this in terms of how it's going to uh, work best for us, particularly. Valda's just asked a question and a really good question there. Um, yeah, this is in US dollars, um, not Australian dollars, Valda, because um, Lipidema Simplified are based in the US. Um, so, yes. There's a little bit more information. We've also put the, um, the link to uh, the website for more information and to register for this program. Um, hopefully, uh, you can jump online and have a look at that. Um, but let's move into the questions. I know that there have been questions along the way, and you're more than welcome to uh, put any more questions that you may have in the chat box. I'm going to move all the way back right up to the beginning and read through the comments and just see... Um, which ones I need to respond to. Okay, so Kathy said, um, for some reason, it's not letting me click on the comments to read the rest of it. So Kathy said she has lymphedema and lipedema. The thighs are worse and she's trying to get rid of. And Kathy, unfortunately, I can't see the rest of it. Um, the rest of the comment. Can you, if you're still online, can you put the rest of the comment um, in and hopefully I'll be able to read the rest of it. But yes, um, Thighs are often the, the biggest sort of issue many of us uh, have, or it's certainly where we start to see the signs of lipedema and lymphedema coming in, and they can cause us a lot of pain and a lot of grief. And what I would say is testing out a ketogenic diet, if it's something you haven't already tried, can really make a huge difference in terms of the pain and the swelling that we experience there. In terms of how much lipedema tissue 
can we lose? This is probably um, a really important um, conversation to have. What I found in my experience in working with ladies with lipedema, the earlier there's an intervention, the more impact it seems to have on lipedema tissue. Initially, the body's going to lose weight in areas of non-lipedema tissue. You know, that's a given. You know, it's, it's like the course of least resistance that the body naturally will lose weight in other places first. The more long-standing our lipedema has been, the more fibrotic that tissue. And fibrosis is scar tissue. So the more scar tissue that's in our limbs, that takes a lot, 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 lot more effort for the body to break down. And so um, the degree of which people can get changes in that lipedema tissue really varies. But what we do find, the benefit is that the pain and the discomfort that's there and some of that excess swelling um, tends to resolve fairly quickly when we move into a ketogenic diet. If anyone on the call is already um, eating this way and has any experience, you're more than welcome to um, put some of those um, uh, comments or your experience into the chat box. Um, just seeing what other questions there are. I can't lose much weight. My Kathy's also saying her mobility is affected. Sure. I'm going to just jump down to the bottom and see whether you, anything else has come in. No. Um, okay. So um, I can't see anything more of what Kathy said. Lipedema, lymphedema has come from nowhere. Don't know the cause. She's had no surgeries. Kathy, there's a genetic component to this um, that, that's certainly valid. It tends to run in families. It would be really interesting to think about your family tree and see whether anyone else has had this. It also tends to happen at times of hormonal flux. So, you know, either um, puberty for some girls, pregnancy is a really another common one, and that, that perimenopausal stage. So that 10 years prior to menopause and then moving into that menopausal period can certainly make a difference as well. Um, Joy asked, is gluten part of the carb issue? So as I mentioned before, Joy, there's two different issues here. So the reason we try keto is to lower the carbohydrates. Um, gluten uh, obviously is part of the carbohydrate picture, but it's not necessarily the reason that keto works. But people often find that, you know, it supercharges their keto because they're not having gluten. And gluten is actually very inflammatory in the body these days. And when I say these days, what I mean is our wheat has been hybridized and, and um, all sorts of things have been done to our wheat to make it make beautiful, white, fluffy bread that we all, um, you know, dream of, think of. Um, and so there's a lot more gluten in the grain these days than there was in, say, the ancestral strains of wheat. And so a lot of people are finding it impacts their health in an inflammatory kind of way. We also know that gluten um, plays a role on those tight junctions in the digestive tract. So you may have heard this referred to as, as leaky gut, um, but we have this lining of the digestive tract that's just one cell thick, and we have these tight junctions that sit between those cells. And when we eat gluten, it tends to have a, a dramatic opening up of these tight junction effect. And if these tight junctions are open for too long at the wrong times, they're allowing little components of food, little components, bacterial breakdown, these sorts of things through into um, our general circulation. Then our immune system can respond to them. So the way that it responds to them is by upregulating upregula inflammation. So yet for many people, moving to a ketogenic diet because it naturally avoids um, gluten as well is one of the other side benefits that comes from this. Um, one of the Facebook users asked about the connection between mast cell activation syndrome uh, and how important it is to avoid fermented foods. Certainly there's connection between mast cell activation and histamine. Uh, all fermented foods contain or contribute to histamine in the body. So certainly that's one of the types of food components that I recommend people uh, minimize when and avoid when they've got some sort of mast cell activation or histamine intolerance going on. In our small group coaching, we don't really focus so much on mast cell activation or histamine issues, but um, through you know individual coaching, that's certainly something that we could talk about. And I guess I go back to that slide I showed right at the beginning where I had that Venn diagram. There was keto, there was um, like an a AIP or like an anti-inflammatory diet, there was the Mediterranean diet. I think if we tried to add mast cell or, or low histamine 
into that as well, that little section in the middle gets smaller and smaller. And even the intersection between keto and an, an, a low histamine diet, it kind of does um, make some more challenges in terms of coming up with food choices. But it's not insurmountable. It's certainly something that can be done. And I tend to uh, look at mast cell activation syndrome is just this overreaction in the body and what we need to do is to calm that down and over time as we calm down that mast cell overreactivity then we can certainly open out our food choices and we don't have those same reactions there just looking to see whether there were any other questions um so someone's saying i've been eating between zero and 20 total carbs a day for 10 months my lipedema pain is gone she's lost 30 pounds and will never go back to a regular way of eating and you're 75 my goodness so wonderful wonderful experience uh with what you you you've gained there and you know getting that pain under control is just such a beautiful side benefit of eating in this way because it it makes everything else feel so much easier because when we're in pain, it's really, really hard work. So wonderful. Thank you for sharing your experience. And I guess what you're saying when you're 75 is that, you know, we're never too too old to try something new. And I think that's a really wonderful um, example that you've shared with us. So thank you for doing that. So Joy said um, there is no total remission, right? So I guess what you're asking, Joy, is if we move into this way of eating, does it totally reverse lipedema? It doesn't. You know, if that scar tissue is there, it's really hard for the body to, to remove that scar tissue. Uh, there's certainly lots of things that we can be doing, things like there's certain types of therapies that can help with that, even just the manual lymphatic drainage and certain other um, types of massage can help to try to break down some of that fibrotic tissue. Um, but it really depends on how long standing the lipedema has been and whether there's some comorbidity with your know, lymphedema, other sorts of things. But what we want to be doing is thinking about this in terms of ketogenic way of eating is a management strategy. It's not a, not a strategy that's totally going to reverse everything, but it's a way of managing it. It's a way of trying to halt any further progression of lipedema tissue so that we um, can be doing everything we can now. And like I said, dietary interventions are just one piece of the puzzle. We do need to think about um, the lifestyle habits, the, the stress level that we're under and all of those um, practical sort of um, conservative treatments like wearing compression, other sorts of things, these things can make a difference. Um, I love whoever's name is Duchess of Quince. I love that. That's really uh, cool. Um, you're using a, um, a pneumatic pump can certainly help a lot and that certainly fits into that realm of the um, conservative treatments that can make a difference as well and help us to feel that little bit better. So any more questions here? I know we've been on the call already for um, probably uh, close to an hour now. Uh, I hope that the information that I've shared has just given you either some renewed motivation to go back to keto or to test out a ketogenic way of eating. I'd really love it if some of you could join us in our next small group coaching offering. It's a really uh, fun, intimate way of um, really stepping into uh, a ketogenic way of eating with support and I think that's really where it's key you know when we've got people that we can bounce questions off in real time it can really be helpful in terms of of navigating this convoluted journey that we're already on I can see that Catherine's on the call Catherine did you have anything that you wanted to to add I don't know whether I'm putting you on the spot or not <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe Catherine's just popped in and popped out again. But uh, thank you so much for being a part of the call today. If anyone's watching this uh, later on as a replay, um, just a couple of reminders. Our small group coaching is starting on Sunday night. Uh, the details are here at learn.lipedemasimplified.org um, and uh, hash cc dash nutrition. Uh, do have a look at that. It gives you a little bit more information about what the small group coaching is about. Certainly, you can uh, also go to lipedemasimplified.org to the coaching tab and book in for a complimentary call uh, with me so that we can have a little bit more of a chat about whether keto is the right next step for you or whether some other steps may be needed uh, in the interim to get you ready for that. Um, Paige is asking, is the coaching always a Sunday night? So it's Sunday night in the US at 5 p.m. Sunday, uh, and then the other session is on a Thursday night. Uh, which is Friday here in Australia. 
Um, these sessions will be recorded. We've actually um, had small group coaching before where people haven't been able to join on the calls um, but have listened on to the replays afterwards but have been able to post questions in the Facebook group and get the support that way or also still feeling like they're part of the group process but not necessarily able to jump on um, all of the calls. Some people can do one but not the other, these sorts of things. But Again, uh, Paige, if you wanted to jump on a call with me or send me through an email, I'm carrie at lipedema-simplified.org um, and just ask any questions that you may have. Oh, magic, someone's just put that up. <laughs> I love technology. <laughs> I can't make it work, but I love that other people can. <laughs> so thank you all for your time today. I, like I said, I'd love to see you as part of our small group coaching or catch up with you in some other way. Um, but all the best and um, thank you for your time today.